What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Heavy Wrench. Today, I wanna to talk to you new guys getting into the industry. A lot of people have asked me in the past, there's uh, been some new guys that came in the shop, some high school students have come in and worked with us, and they always ask, what do I need to start in this industry? So today, I wanna to get in my cart and go through a few things, well, quite a bit of things, that you're gonna to need to start working on construction equipment. Now these are somewhat basic tools. Keep in mind, not everything has to be Snap-on, Matco, Mac, um, Cornwall, any of, the, any of the major tool brands. But I suggest you wanna get a quality tool, okay? It doesn't have to be the top of the line, but it should be the best tool you can buy for the money, okay? Make sure that you're not gonna round off fasteners with an inferior wrench, okay? It's just gonna cause you problems in the long run. So, yes, you can get them very inexpensive tool, but is that very inexpensive tool gonna to cost you more problems in the future because of rounding stuff off? When you get the bigger sizes, um, they seem to be more durable, you know, with the more inexpensive wrenches. You know, I've got some there that I've got from Tractor Supply and uh, different places that have that have been actually pretty good wrenches for the larger sizes, okay? But I'm slowly converting them over to the John Deere wrenches, the, the you know, snap-on wrenches, but it's something I've been doing over time. So take your time, keep that in mind, and uh, I'm gonna take you into the cart right now, and we're gonna see what I think you should suggest. If anybody has any other suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. This video is 100% to help out the guy looking to get into this industry, okay? That's what it's all about. So, let's get after that cart. Start out the cart. This cart right here is what I take to every job every day, okay? The majority of the tools that I use day to day are in this cart, okay? So, when you're picking out a box, picking out your first box, I would look at a cart first because they're pretty reasonable for the size and you can get a cart anywhere, you know, like just get a decent cart. That's all you need with some drawers in it. Okay. You're going to have to hold some of your stuff. You don't need a giant box right out of the, right out of the gate. Don't bury yourself in debt until this cart is overflowing and you need the room. So let's start talking about some wrenches. Okay. Open the drawer here. See, I got a bunch of wrenches, okay? I would say metric. Let's start there. Everything in the industry is starting to go and get a lot of metrics. Get yourself something from 8 millimeter up to 19. That's right here. That's this set right here, okay? Now, just get a good set of wrenches, 8 to 19. I would say get a standard set of wrenches, okay? These are your standards. Um... Most sets that I've seen go up to inch and a sixteenth, some go up to inch and a quarter, uh, some go up to one inch. Just get that standard set that gets you up to an inch or inch and a quarter. I would say that would be a great place to start. Now, you're going to need bigger wrenches than that, okay? Get yourself an adjustable, a decent adjustable that goes up to two inch. Most of the time, when you're up in the bigger sizes, you're going to be working on hydraulic hoses, Okay. This pretty much will do the job when you get up there, okay? So get yourself a good, big, adjustable wrench. That would be a suggestion. Um, Allen wrenches, a couple normal sets. These are what I keep with me, okay? So let's talk ratchets, okay? I use this ratchet all the time. It has a flex head snap-on, okay? I, I really think a flex head would be a great first ratchet, the comfort grip is not needed. You actually might want to go without the comfort grip to, grip to start. Try a flex head. I started out with a ratchet more like, oh, where's that? More like this without the comfort grip, 3 8 drive. And it's a great ratchet, but I don't use this one much. The flex head is just a far superior uh, choice when it comes to that. Uh, as well as the half inch drive ratchets. Flex head super long this one here is going to help you in most situations okay more than any other standard size ratchet comfort grip again 
for me, but I would suggest without the comfort grip to start. You're gonna want extra leverage. The comfort grip is a pain to get extra leverage out of, okay? Now, adapters. Get yourself a good set of adapters that go from, you know, three eighths to quarter, quarter to three eighths, you know, just get a good set so you can get to that three quarter. That long ratchet, the long half inch ratchet, will be nice to put this three quarter adapter on to get some of those bigger drain plugs out and stuff like that. So, extensions. Uh, I didn't talk about quarter inch drive yet. Uh, quarter inch drive, just get yourself a nice long quarter inch drive ratchet. No big deal. Just any any brand, any quality quarter inch drive usually doesn't require a lot of torque. So that one there, I would, uh, you could definitely go with something a little more inexpensive um, if you want. Extensions, just get yourself a set of extensions. Uh, nothing special. I've even got this one here. I don't believe it's snap-on or anything. It's just a El Cheapo half-inch extension. Um, use that one quite a bit. So, sockets. Sockets, sockets, and more sockets, okay? Uh, Quarter-inch drive. Get a set of standards and, uh, and metric. Now, I keep the metrics in my cart. I see more metric than I do standard. Um, but it doesn't mean I don't have them, okay? It would be good. You can buy, most of the time, you can buy these fairly inexpensive. And again, the quarter-inch drive stuff, I would keep inexpensive because it's not something you're going to use a whole lot, but it's something you're going to need. And they don't generally have to, they're not high torque situations, okay? Three eighths. Um, if I had to choose between deeps and shallows, I would, uh, I would probably buy the deeps, okay? Now these are 12 point and these are all blue point, I believe. I have a six point snap on right here, uh, another one here and here. So I've got some six point, I've got some 12 point there. Uh, depends on the brand for me, if I would go six point or 12 point, but generally six point will get you most stuff. There are some drive shaft bolts, some head bolts that are different, but for the most part, get yourself a six point set of three eighths. Um, I would say to start, okay? Same with the standards. I would say get yourself, uh, this set here, I would go from eight to three quarter, or 19, I'm sorry, eight to 19. Uh, same here, eight to uh, five sixteenths, or quarter inch to three quarter is what I would do in the standards for three eighths drive. Deeps over shallows at this point, I would say will help you out in more situations than, than not. Uh, get yourself a good swivel. Um, that they're important. I would choose the impact swivels. They seem to hold their swivel a little bit better than these chrome ones. I don't use these very often at all. Uh, they actually probably don't even need to be in my cart to be honest with you. So, uh, the impact swivels, I wouldn't worry about. I wouldn't worry about much else, okay? Now, half inch drive. Get yourself a set of half inch drive, same type of deal, up to one inch. Um, and here I have my bigger ones, which are shallow. I don't even have half inch drive, uh, half inch in here. That whole set up to, I think I start here at, let's see what we got here. Inch and a sixteenth in my cart is where I start with my half inch drive standard sockets. Okay, metric half inch. I've got shallows, which are nice for my half inch. Uh, I use these for a long, long time before I went to the deeps. Okay, these here, this set here goes from probably ten millimeter up to uh, if you went to twenty four or wherever the set stops, somewhere in there. Even if you want to 19 for now, that would be okay. You're gonna to have to fill that gap though to get up to your 30 millimeter, your 32 millimeter at some point. So keep that in mind. But as far as these bigger sockets go, if you were to get a little bit uh, more expensive ones, they're gonna hold up pretty well, I think. Uh, but get the impacts. Stay away from the chromes on those. Uh, while we're talking about impact sockets and impacts, let's go down to uh, this drawer here. Let's go down to this drawer here, and Ingersoll makes a solid air impact, okay? This is an older titanium. I still use it. This is my go-to. All right. So we've got sockets, wrenches, screwdrivers, pry bars, and pliers, okay? 
quality over quantity with screwdrivers, okay? 90% of the screwdrivers, two screwdrivers that I use are these two right here, okay? If you're only, if you're gonna spend the money to get two screwdrivers, I would say get two quality screwdrivers over a huge set. Uh, this is a number two Phillips, quarter inch blade on the, on the flat. Those two will do good. Uh, gasket scrapers, I've got a couple in my box here. I've actually got uh, three that I use quite often. This one, and here's the other one, it's kind of out of place. But most of the time, I've got them three down here. Most of the time, gasket scrapers, I'll show you which one I use quite often. It's a razor blade scraper, okay? Pick this one up at Lowe's, Home Depot, or anywhere, really, hardware store. Uh, they work pretty good. The blades are cheap. You can replace them all the time. They work pretty good for not scarring up uh, what you're scraping. So pliers, let's, uh, let's go over to pliers. Get yourself a good set of side cutters, okay? Uh, channel locks, just a standard set of channel locks. You'll need those, needle nose. I would get a regular pair of needle nose. You know, most player sets you can get are pretty decent as far as, uh, you know, giving you a variety of what you need. Just normal players. Uh, with the side cutters, I made a video on how to make these flush cuts. These are the snap-on ones. They do perform a little bit better in tighter places than the ones I made on uh, my video. Um, you can check that video out. Uh, let's see, pry bars, okay? I've used the Harbor Freight pry bars in the past, the Pittsburghs, and I've bent them. But if you're gonna get pry bars, I would say the 24 inch pry bar would be the number one that I use. This one's got a striking head. That's gonna be nice to have. Uh, it's gonna be good for, you know, cleaning out the mud, cleaning out the stuff uh, that gets packed in there and actually prying stuff. So let's, uh, let's hit this back to this drawer over here and let's talk about hammers. Get yourself a hammer, just a regular old hammer. It ain't gotta be the snap-on ball peen with the weight in it. Um, just get a hammer that's decent size. I mean, you want a good hammer. Actually, I'm gonna take you over to my box right here and show you a couple of the hammers that I have in here that I've used. Okay, this one here, I think it's a Home Depot. It's an East Wing. Um, I've got another one in here, this. I don't go in here for this one much anymore, but hammers, this is a, this is a solid hammer. I don't even know where I got it from. It's a Stanley. Just a hammer, good size hammer. They're they're important to have. Just a good size hammer. Let's talk about punches, and chisels. Okay, this is what I have. Okay, punches and chisels. Just get yourself a couple of chisels and a couple of punches. They don't have to be super long or super special. Just get a few things that you can um, knock out some roll pin punches. Maybe uh, you know it's not not crazy to crazy to think that that's out of your realm of capabilities you know it might have some roll pins okay so <clears throat> let's look in this drawer what else would I suggest um, I wouldn't even say you need a die grinder at this point yet uh, let's let's talk about this drawer though oh look here's a power pro no stop right there this power probe has its place I do use it quite often but if you're just starting out you don't need a power probe. It'll probably create some bad habits that'll cost you in the long run. Boop. Let's go over here to this guy, multimeter. Okay, this Fluke 233 is what I've purchased. Now I had a, a regular old uh, multimeter before. This one's detachable face, Bluetooth, you know, got some bells and whistles on it. But this is what you need to truly diagnose electrical, okay? You don't need a test light. Stay away from a test light and a power probe until you're ready to use those. Um, you're gonna need some knowledge to, to use those properly and know when to and when not to use them. You can so easily cost yourself a controller by using a power probe. So stay away from that guy. If you're gonna get into it, I know you can spend the 80 bucks on this. If you're gonna spend 80 bucks on that or 90 bucks or hundred bucks or whatever spend it on a multimeter you'll use that one way 
more efficiently than this one, okay? This one will only give you voltage. You won't be able to check resistance. You won't be able to check diodes and you won't be able to check your voltage under load. Speaking of voltage under load, let's walk back over here and I'm gonna grab my test light. Now, I said stay away from test lights. This is not truly a test light. So I've got a trailer bulb with a regular bulb, not LED, because I want to draw a load, okay? Uh, if you have single wire syndrome, that test light you, you're thinking about getting, because, man, they're pretty nice, they're pretty, pretty inexpensive, um, don't do it. You know, this I set up to load to check voltage drops for, like, single wire syndrome, okay? I've used this one numerous times. It's nothing special. It's just a bulb and a couple of wires, and that is what I use for that. Uh, that really comes down to oil changes. You're going to do some oil changes. Those uh, oil filter wrenches, it's a standard set that you can get for automotive. Nothing super special, okay? A grease gun. I have a snap-on, 18 volt. I use that one a lot. But look, there is my standard grease gun. Long handled, nothing, uh, nothing too fancy. I think it even might be a Lincoln. So just get a good grease gun. So let's talk about oil changes though. You got those oil filter wrenches, just your standard set that you would use on vehicles. And uh, if I ever find out these drawers and pick the right ones, it'd be amazing. But oil filter wrenches. Get yourself a pair of these giant channel locks, okay? Or these here actually live work the best for uh, oil changes. These are like my go-to for the large oil filters. They work amazing. But these are what I've used in the past for oil filters. Um, they work pretty good. Uh, a lot of companies have these out there. But they just don't seem to have the bite that I like. Uh, these two are my preferred method of uh, large oil filters, large fuel filters. Um, fuel filters, the, usually the filter wrench will take that off. So uh, the next thing I would suggest would definitely be some Allens. Uh, I said the normal Allen wrenches, but you get into heavy equipment, there's a lot of Allen plugs on final drives and stuff like that. Um, and drain plugs are Allen sometimes. So get yourself a good set of Allens. Uh, I've seen the gray pneumatics. I've seen the ones from Harbor Freight. They all seem to be decent. Just get yourself a set of Allens, standard and metric that go whatever the size goes from. I think this one goes from uh, six millimeter up to 19. Um, and then it goes from up to three quarter in the uh, standard, okay? Uh, and then regular Allen sockets. I wouldn't even, you don't even have to go there yet. You know, regular Allen sockets will be something you can add to your toolbox in the future. Uh, torque wrench. You don't need nothing super fancy. Uh, if you're just starting out, you're probably not gonna be doing much engine work, but you will want a torque wrench of some sort. Uh, get a half inch drive, I think, a click style. Um, get a decent one, something that you can trust. Trust with a torque wrench is large because if you're torquing something, it means you need to know specifically what that torque is. I think that is what I would suggest to start. So those are my thoughts on what you need to start in this industry. Small tool cart and what the tools I've just described. Uh, the, in quality though, try to get quality over quantity. You know, if you're looking at spending a hundred and some dollars on a set of wrenches and they only get you they get you a huge set but the quality's not there be careful you'll round them fasteners off and then you'll cost yourself some easy out time some drilling time and you'll be borrowing stuff and it's okay to borrow stuff too if you need it ask around most guys in this industry we all know what it's like to start out okay i remember starting in this industry and what i had when i started now I did have quite a bit when I started, but I had a lot to, lot to purchase, okay? Now I'm at the point where I'm lending out tools and it's kind of nice. I like that giving back method, you know? I had to borrow some, so now I'm lending them out. It's a good thing. I, uh, I have no problem lending out tools as long as they don't come back, you know, abused, 
or mistreat it. You know, if you need to use it and it ends up breaking, hey, that's why I buy the warranty tools, okay? That's what we need to do. So let's keep this industry moving forward because I think it's a great place to be. And if you're watching this, you're probably interested in it. So uh, those are my thoughts on what you need to buy. Uh, the tool cart, I would start with a tool cart, please. Please start with a tool cart, stay away from the box. Uh, the big box purchase at first, okay? That's, uh, that can come down later on, later on down the road, okay? If anybody has any further advice, I would appreciate it. And I know the guys watching this will be free, they're guys and girls, because hey, there's no restrictions on who can work on heavy equipment. Let's all, uh, let's all get after it. So if anybody has any more suggestions, comment in the links below. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. I will start coming out with some more content like this. If you'd like, hit it up below. I've got some other ideas for videos coming forward. Click that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram at, at the heavy wrench on Instagram. Uh, it's gonna start picking up some pace. We gotta keep thinking about that um, and, and getting some more pictures out there. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.